I'm always uh, thinking a little bit forward from things that are that are still coming up, um, and after finishing uh, the water tank and the closet and the bed as well, because those things have to be done first. Um, I'll be putting in the, the kitchen area and that's going from side wall to side wall. Just on the other side of the kitchen, on the passenger side, uh, I have a fridge planned. I'm still wondering about the size of the fridge um, and that's going to be between the 2.5 and the 4.5 square uh, cubic feet uh, and that's uh, between say about 65 and 130 liter model, um, give or take a little bit. Uh, it's very likely going to be the smaller size uh, and, and that's fine with me because that's uh, sufficient for, for my type of use uh, but I always would appreciate a larger size uh, so if I can fit in a larger fridge that's always a plus uh, but I'll, I'll make a mock-up out of the box where the water tank came, uh, came in uh, and then fit that in that space and see how well it fits how the height and elevation work out and uh, so first the markup There is my fridge. Hi Joey, <laughs> you're in the way, guy. Because of the final position of the water tank and the separation to the bed, I've located where the closet will be and then automatically around here, the kitchen area will start. And that will go probably about uh, 15 or between 15 and 18 inches deep. My idea was, because you got this indent where the windows are, where you gain about three, three and a half inches of space. So I can use this three inches to push the fridge a little bit back into the wall and just uh, create more living space out here. I will add probably uh, about two inches of uh, polyiso uh, around the fridge just to get it more efficient. The idea is to place the fridge at the same level as the countertop and by placing it over the countertop you will reduce of course the, the, uh, the amount of countertop you have available but you don't lose as much space, living space in the rest of the van. The fridge would go approximately, would come approximately at this height. This is a 2.3 cubic foot fridge. Uh, or about 65 liter and if I would go to one size larger that's a 130 liter or four and a half cu cubic foot uh, that would be about three inch, uh, eight in inches higher so let's say about three here and about five inches below here however it would go about five at least five inches deeper that would mean I couldn't place it on top of the that would mean that the fridge would go to this location so I have to figure that out it's um, it's a work in progress. The next step that it, uh, is that I want to lay out approximately, just to get a better feel for it, where the kitchen countertop and the cabinets going to be, uh, including where the fridge might come, depending on the size of it. Gives me a little bit better overview of how things are going to feel. If I use the larger fridge, the 130, it's not that much deeper, it's about an inch deeper, so that's not a problem. But because of the size, it 
can go over the countertop it has to go below the countertop so i have to place it in front of the countertop just to reach it and then if i place that larger fridge here this is then where the smaller or yeah the cabinets uh, will start that are a little bit narrower or they continue up to here or there with the smaller fridge <laughs> you're in the way boy <laughs> It's a simple choice um, when a four and a half cubic feet fridge uh, costs only slightly more uh, and uses the same or similar amount of energy as its smaller cousin. Uh, yet after some more deliberating, uh, I tend to go for the smaller size. Uh, and that's mostly for the space saving inside of the van. Uh, I know how it can be uh, in a van after three days of rain and and the walls getting closer and closer but i still have some time to make a final decision and things will get clearer over time but there's more uh, i spent a lot of time this week uh, uh, looking at the electrical system uh, so far I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with the uh, panels that i've installed on the roof uh, that's about 400 uh, watts uh, and i'm currently i'm testing uh, some portable panels outside but I'm considering to completely uh, change the electrical setup. And by that, I don't mean the outlets, lights or appliances, but the components of the system, like the inverter and the batteries. Instead of using components from different manufacturers, uh, I may go with a fully integrated system from Victron. Uh, that would be a much cleaner setup without monitors, uh, or at least visible monitors. Uh, just one app would, uh, would do the trick. Uh, that means that I wouldn't do a do-it-yourself lithium battery, which in itself could save me uh, at least about a thousand bucks or so. Um, uh, and I would give up the separation between the uh, house batteries and the vents electrical system, uh, which I would have preferred. That's it uh, for this update. Uh, next week I'll continue with the uh, review of the solar blanket and the flexible solar panel. So, see you then. Bye. Hmm? Say bye. <laughs> hmm? Hi guys, this is Joey and we're building a one-of-a-kind RV. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. If you enjoyed the video, give us a like and subscribe. Or better yet, uh, leave a comment. Thanks guys. You've done a good job.